This video is pretty short and sweet, kind of like Lyft, but hopefully there are a few surprises, kind of like Lyft. Hey internet, I'm Steve and welcome to Raffo. We're slowly making our way through the Stormlight Archive, which when I started this series was far and away the most connected. There's a couple other solid contenders now. Previous videos have gone over all non-Stormlight books, Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, as well as individual videos for The Lost Metal and Tress of the Emerald Sea. If you've missed those, I got the playlist right here. Today we're digging into Edge Dancer. Strap in, everyone. Spoilers for everything. I'll be avoiding spoilers for Oathbringer, Rhythm of War, and Dawn Shard, and Secret Projects are of course off the table, but you have been warned. Edge Dancer, Lyft's novella, who we first meet in a Words of Radiance interlude getting chased by Nail. This is a direct continuation of that. She runs away from Azir and her pal Emperor Gox, afraid they were going to civilize her or some such. My fair lady? I'm a good girl, I am! We learn that Windle was a chair gardener, specifically growing them into crystals? Her conversation with the Night Watcher is referenced. She asked to stay the same and the world to change around her. This may have also made it easier for Windle to bond her, not going through the same trauma and memory loss that we've seen other Spren experience. Heading to Yada, we learn that the war between Emul and Tukar is heating up. The 80s War. Why it's called 80s War, I have no idea. Anyway, Tukar is led by the god priest Tezim, and he's nuts. The Tashiki scribe at the gate is wearing a shikwa, basically fancy mummy wraps, but has the face bit pulled up. He's in his homeland, so he doesn't have to hide from Noon Raylisi. Sounds a lot like race, with a little bit of the pure lake thrown in. Wendell tells us that the cultivation spren almost had him bond a nice cobbler, almost definitely im from Words of Radiance, which would have made him an edge dancer instead of a truth watcher, probably because they share the surge of progression. He would still get to heal kids' feet. We also get our first clear appearance of a strange Kremling, this one seems to have an eyebrow on it or something. A strip of fuzzy brown on its back that seemed spongy. Likely part of Arklo, a Dissian Imian, sleepless, that we first meet in this book. While chasing after Nail, Windle tells Lyft that he has eyes she cannot see, a spren. Is this just an assumption, or... Zeth's here with Nightblood! His hair has grown a bit, and his spirit seems to be poorly attached. Nail claims that Kaladin is a Voidbringer who has been hiding since the last desolation. Seems like a bit of a stretch, buddy. It's also confirmed that the Skybreakers as an organization are still active. Nail's got two little deputies with him. Windle recognizes Nail's name. Apparently the Spren have legends of the Heralds leaving. Hanging out by the orphanage, Lyft sees a prim Alethi man with straight black hair and an imperious attitude. Is wit in Yada? Then again, she later talks about old white hair, who winked at her while intentionally getting swallowed by a great shell. And Hoyd, by his own admission, has spent a long time in a stomach. The stump helps a kid having an autistic meltdown. Lyft sees another strange Kremling and talks with Arklo, who seems to know she's on her way to becoming an edge dancer, calling her an ear. And he's being honest when he says his role changes moment by moment. Throughout this book, life spren keep showing up or being attracted to lift. A lot of spren make their appearances here, actually. Laughter spren, glory spren, hunger and exhaustion spren, even concentration spren. We hear a teensy bit more about Lyft's past. Her mom apparently got sick and wasted away. Also, night blood makes her nauseous. In Lyft's confrontation with Arklo, he mentions the philosophy of the Omnithi, which live in a land that she will never visit, presumably off-world. Not sure where, though. Apparently Arklo was a friend and ally to the Ancient Radiance. The Sleepless are watching the others. The Assassin, Zeth. The Surgeon, Kaladin. The Liar, Shallan. The High Prince, Dalinar. This is a great tie-in from the blurbs on the backs of the Stormlight books, which Brandon has said are actually in-universe statements from other Sleepless. He also mentions Axes the Collector, a Sia Imian, and he's determined to meet with Lyft again. After she runs to not fight Nail, she swears the third ideal of the Edge Dancers, after summoning a Windle Rod, and forces Nail to recognize that he has failed in preventing a desolation. Their hug is actually a really sweet and tender moment. Windle tells us there's a connection between condensed investiture and metal, and some spren have even become bows before. The stump describes her spren, like light reflected on a wall from a mirror. She's a truth watcher, 
same as what Eam would have been. Lyft has a wart on her toe that keeps growing back. Is that wart so inherent in her self-concept? The tenth pancake is dedicated to Tashi. Is there a cognitive tenth pancake that Lyft could eat? If she goes into Shadesmar, could she find the spren of a pancake? And then she goes and heals a bunch of refugees coming into the city. Lyft is amazing. And there's Edge Dancer. Thanks for watching. Big thanks to Doug, Matt, and the rest of my patrons. Because of you, I'm able to get new videos out basically every other week, if not faster. If you'd like to support me on Patreon and see those videos early, I'd really appreciate it. Cosmere Connections for Oathbringer, likely a multi-parter because there's so much, will be coming in the next couple weeks. However, my next video will be a review of Secret Project 2, so if you haven't yet, read and find out!